Okay, now that we've talked about the normal distribution, which is fundamental, and we've reminded ourselves about the idea of a standard error or a common distance between our estimate and the parameter that we're trying to estimate, now we're ready to start talking about the epistemology of hypothesis testing. Now epistemology means what can data tell us about the world? What can we actually learn about a hypothesis from collecting data and going through the process of a, hy a hypothesis test? So let me give you my idea of, of, of how I want you to think about it. Uh, what we're trying to do, we're trying to estimate a true value, a parameter, a population mean, a population pop, uh, proportion or a population variant, something like that. And we have to guess at the value of the parameter, make our best guess, by only observing a sample estimate, which we call a sample statistic. And with a regression, I want to just point this out, even if we have data for the whole population, we do not get the true slope. It, we don't just have a sample of we, even if we have all the data for an entire population, say uh, everyone at a university, and we gave them all an IQ test, if we run a regression on that data explaining the performance on the IQ test, we cannot take those slopes as being the true slopes. Why not? Well, because there is what we're studying is not really the true, we don't have the true values of, we have the observed values of how people did on the IQ test that day, but we don't have the true values of all of the possible observations. Some of those people got up that morning and they were tired. Some people were sick. Some people just weren't thinking clearly. Some people just got dumped by their girlfriend. So there are parts of this error, this residual, that we can never explain even with all the information in the world. And so this brings up the idea that we call a data generating process. Think about a machine. There's some kind of process or, or model, machine, that tells us how people are going to score on a test. So think about this as being God's process for what causes people to score a certain amount on, a, on an IQ test. So think about a machine. It cranks out our observations, our YIs, of these I, IQ scores, but those include a random error term. I can't emphasize this enough. That stochastic error term are, it's a combination of two things. Number one, some of the performance on an IQ test is truly random. What kind of questions did they decide to put on it that day? Right? And other things, while they may not be purely random, they're unknowable and unexplainable. What's going through the mind of the person as they take the test? How much sleep did they get? Was it restful sleep? Uh, you know, what did they have to eat? Did they have enough protein? Now those things might not be random, but we're never going to be able to measure them. So that stochastic error term, there's some truly random part, and there is some part that is just unexplainable, even if we had all the possible data and the best model. So there's always going to be this uncertainty about the slopes we get, even with large sample sizes, and even if we have all the data for a certain population. We don't know, we don't see all the possible values of residuals or, or all the possible values of the stochastic error term to be more precise. So, so every sample slope estimate or sample mean it's going to be wrong but will hopefully probably in some sense be close to the true mean or the true slope. But how the sample estimates are distributed around the param parameter is what we call a sampling distribution. And so what we want to know is the mean of this sampling distribution and the standard deviation of the sampling distribution. Now if our estimator is unbiased, remember that discussion, uh, if our estimator is unbiased then the mean of that sampling distribution is going to be the mean of the 
population parameter. Right? On average, our estimates will be correct. The standard deviation of the estimates, that's what we call the standard error, the common distance between our estimate and the truth. So here are some things we need to go through and think about systematically when we go through this process of learning about the world through collecting data. First, this epistemology idea. How do we learn about the world? How do sample estimates give us knowledge about a theory? Second, what sort of distribution does my estimate follow? Sometimes it'll be normal. Sometimes it'll have a student's t distribution, sometimes a chi-squared, and sometimes an f, and I'll take you through how you can determine that without having to memorize. And lastly, you just need lots of practice and thinking about what you're doing. And we'll try to do these three things in a systematic way and get the handle on it. So first, epistemology. How do we learn about the world from samples of data? What do we really want to know when we collect data and we do a hypothesis test? Here's what we'd really like to know. I would like to be able to calculate the probability that my theory is right given I see some kind of data and it generates some kind of estimate, some kind of sample mean. Can I calculate the probability my theory is right given the fact that I got some kind of sample estimate? Answer, no. You cannot do that. We have not figured out a way to do that. Now some Bayesians might say that you can, but okay, we're not going to go there. So we want to be able to calculate the probability our theory is right, given the fact we see some data. You can't do that. The problem, the basic problem is that there are an infinite number of theories out there. And so with an infinite number of theories, it's not going to be possible to assign a positive probability that each of those infinite number of theories is correct. Let me give you just a wacky example. My theory is that churches are actually a front for criminal organizations and that the more churches there are in a city, the more crime there will be in the city. So that's my theory. The data I collect in cities with more churches, there is more crime. Have I proven that my theory is correct? No, I haven't. Can I calculate the probability that my theory is correct? No, we can't. Data can either be consistent with a theory or they can be inconsistent with a theory. So if you collect data, it could match the predictions of a theory or it could not match the predictions of a theory. It do, if your data match the predictions of your theory, it doesn't prove your theory's right because there could be an infinite number of other theories that would also predict the same kind of thing, right? Why is it that there are more churches and places where there are more crimes? Because my theory, my real theory would be that there are more people and where there are more people, there are more churches and where there are more people, there are more crimes. Now I could collect some data that's consistent with that theory but that doesn't prove that either theory is right. What you need to do is keep collecting data, keep doing experiments until you find some data that prove or tend to, to go against the theory. Now, we don't like to use the word prove. You can just come up with data that is consistent with the theory or not consistent. Try to avoid the word prove, especially with a regression, because we're just looking at relationships, not really proof for, you know, you can find evidence for something, but you can't really prove things. So since we can't find the probability a theory is right given a certain amount of data or kind of data, what can we learn? That's, that's the important question. Well, here's what we can calculate. We can find the probability that we would see a certain kind of estimate if we assume, given, that the theory is right. So here's the way hypothesis testing works. We can't find the probability our theory is right. But what we can do is calculate the probability that we would see data like this. So what's the probability we would, col we would collect data like we collected if we assume that the theory is correct? 
So we assume for a minute that the theory is correct, and then we ask ourselves, we can calculate this, what is the probability that a randomly selected data would produce estimates like this if, here's the big if, if we assume that the theory is right. So using this kind of interpretation, this is called the frequentist approach to hypothesis testing. And this is what we're going to be doing. This is what most people do. Uh, we say, suppose the hypothesis was right. We call it the null hypothesis. Then we calculate something called a p-value, which gives us the probability we could calculate, sorry, that we would observe an estimate like this assuming the theory is right. And if that probability is high, maybe the theory is right. If it's low, maybe the theory is wrong.